Well, we're still in Portland, Oregon. Mm-hmm. This time we're actually in Portland, Oregon. Yes. We found these neat old ads. Right. I think from the 50s, saying that the, the cool place to propose marriage is Portland, Oregon. Because oh, really? Because there's the Benson Hotel, oh. and you check into the Benson, and then you propose at the Benson. Wow. And the photography was really neat. And on doing a wee bit of research, we found that the Benson's been completely restored. Oh. And we said, let's go stay at the Benson for anniversary. Right. Since we've already proposed. Well, but yeah. Yeah. So we, we did that. But we can kind of pretend that we're, <laughs> that we're redoing that sort yeah. of thing, because that's really sort of what oh, an anniversary exactly. is. Exactly. You relive the fun you, moment. You relive that fun mm -hmm. moment. So we're going to go stay at the Benson. And then while we're in town, we're going to go to the Pitcock Mansion. You found oh, it. I found that one online. It looks like it would be fun. So this should be really cool. Mm -hmm. We're going to explore some of the older opulence yes. that once was and really still is yes. the City of Roses, Portland, yes. Oregon. <laughs> well, the setting here around Portland is sure spectacular. I've flown over it before, but never been actually to Portland. Boy, Mount Hood, check that out. It's just incredible. Portland's in the Willamette Valley, right at the confluence of the Willamette and Columbia Rivers. Wow. And because of all these rivers flowing through, it's always been known for its multiple bridges. That is really cool. Look at those. I just love some of these old, old bridges. They're just so cool. But the scenery around here is just absolutely spectacular. A lot of green and a lot of trees. It reminds me of Seattle. The, the Oregon coast is just really, really something to see. Not far from Portland, you're right on the Pacific coast. Look at the sand on the beach. I never dreamed it would be like this. And one really interesting part of Portland uh, coast is the rock formations. Oh, check that out. It's just stunning. And we've got the abandoned tracks of the Tillamook branch of the Southern Pacific coming through. <laughs> That's really cool. Look at this. Uh, not entirely abandoned, though. Hmm. And Portland is also home of one of America's most famous steam locomotives. Oh, it's one of my favorites. And right nearby is Antiques Powerland. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that's what really brought us here. They have the annual Steam Up. Look at that. And that will be a future show. That's next week's show, as a matter of fact. I love these things. Those are cool. I love it. Just these old steam tractors and other yeah, antique equipment. This is really neat, a corner room. Wow, check the view. The view from the Benson is just unbelievable. Portland is, is a beautiful city, but our view and the Benson itself is just opulent. Oh my gosh, check that out. The ceiling and everything, wow. You know, Portland has a rich history. It's one of the oldest cities in the West. It was at the far western end of the Oregon Trail. But at some point in time, it became a very wealthy, very opulent community. I can tell, look at the design on that banister. It's just beautiful, all hand carved. And this beautiful ceiling and the chandeliers, man. Turn of the century opulence. This is really a neat place. It feels kind of like Seattle to me, but yet a little bit different. I've always called it the small San Francisco. Oh, that too. <laughs> There's so much to do in Portland, and I decided to get on the internet to find some entertainment, and I found this wonderful mansion, the Pitok Mansion. They built it on the top of a mountain 2,000 feet above Portland, and look at that view. What a view. That's just amazing amazing the pit talks uh, were the publishers of the local newspaper the oregonian 
And in 1907, they decided to build their dream house up on the top of this hill. I know what a house it is. It's all built out of uh, the native sandstone. And Georgiana Pittock was uh, one of the founders of the Portland Rose Society. Wow, look at those roses. And uh, so she wanted to plant hundreds and hundreds of roses around the house, but her group had planted over 40,000 roses wow. in Portland. So much so that Portland is known as the city of roses. And it isn't just roses, there are all kinds of flowers here, and of course my favorite, the hydrangea. Hydrangea are really pretty and they seem to thrive in this environment. But the inside of the house is... Oh my, this must be the music room. The music room, there's 40 rooms. 40 rooms. 40 rooms, and they're generally sort of entertaining spaces. I think there's only four main bedrooms here. Oh, wow. There's more dining rooms than there are bedrooms. I, I counted that, <laughs> yes. So uh, they must have really enjoyed entertaining. This is Henry Pittock here, and this is what he looked like at the time they were building the house. And uh, this is a photograph of Georgiana Pittock. They constructed the house out of the native sandstone, as I said, and it was quarried not too far from the home. What a project. I can only imagine. We have the Oolitic limestone where I am from, and that's, it's a similar process. And one of the themes of our show is that if you want to do a thing, get it done because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's an example there. And these guys didn't even start on this house until way late in life, and they were only able to live here for four years oh, my. before they passed away, and then their kids inherited it. And as these things often go, the kids didn't have the means and the wherewithal to support such an extensive house. And uh, they, they attempted to live in it, but they couldn't maintain it. And uh, they just sort of watched it crumble around oh, them. Oh, how sad. And then it was extensively damaged in a huge windstorm. And so they decided to sell it, and the city of Portland bought it to restore it and turn it into a city park. Nice. Because of the gardens here. And the kids had just said, if we could just get enough money to buy a house we can afford, that's all we want out of it. <laughs> so they sold it to them for $225,000. Oh my goodness. But look at the damage from the windstorm. Oh. Just unbelievable what the city had to do to get this place back on its feet. But now you would have to say it's a national treasure. I would say so. Just the artifacts and the way it's constructed, the style. Mm. And it's emblematic of a time period in America. And it's really neat that it's a, a public facility now where people can come and just enjoy it. Right. And walk the gardens and just enjoy a day up here. You know, I keep thinking at their age, it would have been tricky walking all of these stairs. Oh, well, maybe not. Maybe they were very fit. You just well, never know. <laughs> actually, they put in an elevator. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the, the house is, you know, semi-modern, uh, 1907 to 1914 construction. And so it does have some interesting sort of modern conveniences. They had two daughters living with them, in spite of the fact that those daughters also had their kids, the grandkids living here as well. But this was one of the daughter's rooms. And this is the master bedroom. This is cool, I love it. It's beautiful, I love the furniture. I'm not sure if it's the original furniture or they just found furniture of that period. But this master bedroom is just spectacular. They'd also taken in some of their grandkids just out of necessity, and they were living here in the home with them as well. 
So there were actually four main bedrooms up on the top floor here. And a sun porch as well, which I found intriguing. Yeah, I guess this was a way to avoid tuberculosis. Sleep out in the open elements whenever you possibly could. There's also a playroom. Look at how fun that is. I love the Punch and Judy, the puppet show yes. here. <laughs> oh, the fun toys that kids had. And this is uh, another sleeping porch just for the children. Uh, good, healthy living conditions for the smaller ones to sleep on another sun porch. And two bathrooms on the top floor. Oh my, those are nice. They're really nice. I mean, at a time when a lot of people didn't have indoor plumbing, they had two uh, bathrooms that everyone shared. Oh, look the... at that shower. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I, nobody had a shower back then. Oh my, get but, really uh, clean. <laughs> there it is, a very early example of a shower. And here we have one of the dining rooms. Well, that's the formal, formal, formal dining room. But this is not the big dining room, which oh. was downstairs, a giant oval-shaped dining room for entertaining. As I say, more dining rooms than bedrooms. Oh, wow. And they sure had some beautiful china. Oh, check out the flowered piece at the bottom. I'll bet that's <laughs> hand-blown glass. Every dining room had its own china. It just uh, blows my mind. I don't know much about China, but this stuff is just gorgeous. And this was special China just for seafood. This was my favorite, this little breakfast nook right here. The smallest of the dining rooms. Right, the, cozy. The breakfast nook. <laughs> And I found this fascinating. This was a special sink constructed just for washing the china made out of a soft metal that would not chip or scratch the china when the servants were cleaning the china. And I imagine they had quite a few servants in I a home like this. I can only imagine. Wow. Just, uh, these were sort of the servant areas toward the back of the house and then a large section of the basement was all just servant spaces. I love that stove. This part of the kitchen I fell in love with. It's very utilitarian and yet very beautiful in its own way. To me it's just homey. It's homey, yeah. And this really nice pantry. That too, I love that. And in the early 19th century, there were, quote, modern conveniences. This entire room was at one time a walk-in refrigerator. Right. Where most people just had an ice box, but later it was replaced with this refrigerator. And then, of course, downstairs, extensive laundry facilities. Wow, look at that. And the Pitocks could communicate with the staff through a modern intercom system. Check that out. Well, yeah, that is some opulence. Oh my goodness. That hotel is really nice. Oh, I love the hotel. That was just fun. Man, we had a corner room. We had the and best the room. The yes. best room, you know. And we didn't really work. Well, I did kind of. I just said I wanted the VIP room because it was on oh, their we're thing. VIP. And I said, you know. And it really was, I think it was like $10 more for the, you know, the yes. whole thing was actually terribly affordable. Right. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised yes. at how affordable the basin was. Right. And then the Pitcock is just oh fun to, to go see this beautiful house wow. in one of the most beautiful settings in mm -hmm. one of the most beautiful cities. Talk about a vista. Ooh, Ooh, yeah. Wow. So that was just really neat. Yes. So this was this was fun, mm -hmm. a little bit different for us, right. but not really when you get right down to uh, it. It's, it's just us going screwing around looking for fun things. So. Yes, that came up. <laughs>
At any rate, if you haven't been over to the channel, do pop over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe because it helps us out. It gives us these numbers that we can use for our stats and yes. that sort of thing. And Google loves that sort of thing. Analytics, they call it. So. Ah, the old analytics. And then click on your notification bell, and then mm -hmm. you'll be notified every time we upload a movie. Exactly. Which isn't that hard to figure out. We upload Sunday mornings and Tuesday right. mornings with right. the collection. Right. Show. right. But with the time zones, so you know. But with the doing. time zones and everything, so there it is. Just, just click on the little notification bell. Right. The easy way to do all of these things is to click on the infamous blue button, which mm -hmm. will be appearing momentarily. Ready? Zoink! See that round blue button? <laughs> well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here again in one week with some more screwing around. Mm -hmm. See you then. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.